Here's my review on the Launch X431 Pro bi-directional scanner. Here I'm including the timestamps for the video. I will be doing a overall specs, what's in the box, features and actual usage, then my honest review, and a final conclusion on if this might be right for you. So let's get started. Starting off with the specs, it has an 8 inch 1280 by 800 high resolution screen, very receptive to your touch and everything else. It's got a four core processor with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It runs on the Android 10.0 operating system, which I must say has run extremely smooth. It has an eight megabit rear facing camera. It really isn't too impressive in low light, but does great with light, which I haven't seen on any other scan tool where it actually scans the van if it can't auto detect it with the computer. And then finally, it's got a long lasting 6,000 milliamp rechargeable battery. This will give you a long lasting performance and pretty much all day working because it's always charging through the OBD port anyways. So what's inside the box? You will get a tablet of course, but along with the tablet, you also get a charging cable with a multi outlet plug. So no matter what country you're in, you're not stuck not being able to charge it, which I think is very nice of them to do. You also get a OBD connector. You can simply connect it to your scan tool and then all you gotta do is hook it up to your car's OBD port. And then finally, you will receive your owner's manual and a certificate showing it was inspected for quality control and a small thing for sign up. So don't throw it away because you will have to have the unique passcode on there to register the device. That way they know it's not stolen and all that good stuff. Now let's jump into actually using this thing. Okay, so first time setting up your scan tool, this is the screen you'll get. The X431 Pro Elite app is right up there at the top. So once you click on the app, you have to update all of the different softwares. All of it's free, but you will also have to register your device. So we're gonna go ahead and open it. So once everything's updated and you got it here to the main screen, you'll see that you have intelligent diagnosis. You have your local diagnosis, service function, remote diagnosis, which is a really cool new feature. This will allow you to essentially share your screen and your data with someone else that also has a launch scan tool that can do this. And that way you can kind of work with them to help diagnose the problem. This can also do TPMS. You got your software updates. You'll see the number be read and a bunch when you first start it. You got your diagnostic history. This will show you all the cars you've already worked on and what faults they already had. So if we look at that. So if you click right there where it says diagnostics for Toyota, if you click on it, It'll pull up everything about it and all the codes that it had stored in each module. So we're going back out of that. You got vehicle coverage, mall, info center, user info, and other modules. You got ADAS. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it up and you're going to see what happens. Okay, after it's been plugged in, you'll see the battery is charging and I'm connected to Wi-Fi. We're going to go to Intelligent Diagnosis. It's going to try to connect to the VCI and then it's going to try to read the VIN. On this particular car, it's a little bit older, so it doesn't have it stored in the ECU or anything. So we're actually going to get it with the rear facing camera. So give it just a second. So right here, if you hit that top right little black square, it's going to pull up this little thing that's trying to scan your VIN. Now, without light, it's just pretty poor. But if we add light, there we go. And there we go, we have our VIN. So we hit OK. It's decoding the VIN and it's gonna let us know, hey, is it a, you know, yada, yada, yada. And just like I said, it pops up our vehicle information, 2004, Toyota, 4Runner, and engine model, engine size, and the VIN. I've actually yet to see this feature on any other scan tools, even though most have a camera in the back. Even Altel, I haven't seen them do it on Altels, and I'm a big fan of Altel. So to me, Launch did better in that aspect for sure, 100%. That way you don't have to actually type in that entire VIN number. Now then, you have three different options. You can quick access everything. You can go to your scan history, which we have done before. We can view our records, which is just gonna show us all this information once again. So it tells us everything that it had picked up before. And you can actually go in there and look at other data too. So like that, click on it, and you can see all that. So very cool, very useful information. You can see if it's coming back with the same problems or if it's new problems, but we're gonna go back again. Now we'll go to diagnostic. Okay, so we're in North America. We got the 16 pin DLC. So that's the one we're gonna use, but depending on where you're at, you may choose one of these other ones. Okay, once again, it just verifies that this is everything about this vehicle and you wanna make sure everything's correct. We'll hit okay. Okay, from here, you get to choose what you wanna do. You got ADAS, calibration, system selection, health report, service function, customize, engine check, and vehicle information. On this particular one, we're just gonna go into health report. This is gonna go through all of the available computers and modules and look for any fault codes. As you can see, this car has quite a few fault codes. You got your EOBD, OBD2, engine, ABS, TPMS, and you can just hit enter and go straight to it. Another thing you can do, which is pretty cool, you got pinning codes right there, but right here where you see the little Google icon next to current. So for P430, we'll just click that Google icon and it will pull up all the relevant information on it. And you could go in here and read about what that code is telling you and all that stuff. So it can be very handy. We're going to go ahead and go back. We'll go into our engine. Of course, from here, you got your basic read fault codes, clear fault codes, read freeze frame data, uh, read data stream, actuation test, which is your bi-directional little tools and your special functions. So if we read fault codes, we can, of course, read what we already seen. We can clear the memory fault codes from right here, or we can go back and also clear them right there, clear fault memory. Let's go to read data stream. Go ahead and start the vehicle. Okay, so from here you can click any data that you want to see. Like for instance, a lot of people will look at fuel trim to see if you're running lean or rich. So you can just scroll through all these. This vehicle has 108. And so say you wanted that, that, coolant temp, you know, any of those, you can just click them and you'll get to see them when you hit okay. 
but you can also search right up here in the top right, you'll see a little magnifying glass. And in here, it's fuel trims are FT instead of written out. I'm not real sure why. Most of them have them written out, but we, as we can see, we got that. So we'll hit a little blue check mark. And now we can do short fuel trims number one, short fuel trim number two, uh, long fuel trims, and we'll hit okay. Now then it'll pop up its values. So here we can start our diagnostic procedures. You can save your samples, compare samples, you can graph it, report it, or record it, which, you know, depending on your situation, you may need, you may not. Up in the top right-hand corner, I have it in English, but you can put it in metric as well. It's not gonna change for these uh, datas other than the temp. So I'll switch it back to English, it goes to Fahrenheit, but it will be relevant with other data pids depending on what you choose. Now if we go to graph, here's a graph of all of them. We can see what they're doing and everything else. Okay, so we can see our values now that they've progressed a little bit more. And what you can do is you can actually touch on one. So let's say short field trim number two. And there we go, we get a better graph. We can actually do our zoom in gesture with our two fingers and we can get a shorter time to see what the peaks and valleys are. Or you can do the expand gesture. That's just taking your two fingers apart and putting them together. And now you can see everything that's been recorded up to this point. And then we can always hit the back button and go back and see our other graphs. Now, if we wanna combine our graphs, we'll hit combine. Okay, so you can have a maximum of four data streams at a time. So we'll go ahead and take some of these off. We'll say we want our long terms and our short terms. And then if you click to the side, it will of course move it out of the way. Now we can see how they correlate with each other. Once again, depending on the data you're working with, this is gonna be more valuable or less valuable, but it's a really great feature and any auto mechanic's gonna need it. Once again, you can zoom it out or zoom it in. That way you can get a clearer idea of what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go back, back. All right, we got our special functions and actuation tests. So I'll give you a quick look at those. These are gonna be your bi-directional features most of the time. So as you can see, we can change the injector volume. We can change, turn on and off the fuel pump. We can actually stall out the car if we wanted. Uh, fuel pump relay, line pressure. Now, the more sophisticated and newer your car is, this is a 2004. I'm honestly surprised it has, you know, as many as it does, to be honest with you. But the newer it is, the more modules it's got, the more stuff it can do. So this is just a basic 2004, remember that. And we'll go to special function. And we got our all service light reset, check mode. We have our O2 sensor operation, EVAP system check, and customize. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back. Now then, with all of this, you can, from this screen, you can clear all DTCs. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you wrote down everything you have. You definitely wanna keep up with what it was going on and what comes back. If we click report, okay, so we have a report type. We can hit pre-repair, post-repair, or diagnostic scan. We can put in the odometer, license plate number, any miscellaneous notes. Okay, at this point, you can put in your shop name, your telephone address, email. We're gonna just put, you know, one, two, three, and then you can add your technician's names. If you have more than one technician using this scan tool, your repair order, you can put that as anything you want. And then we'll go down, customer name, and then you can go down here to okay. Now, once you get here, you can clearly see at the top right, it says pre-repair, vehicle diagnostic report. This will save you a lot of time. You can see all the information on the left side. If you go down, you'll see the year, make, model, then all that good stuff. And then you'll see every single code that is in the system and all the different modules. Now then you can save it. And once it's been saved, you can actually share it. Okay, so from here, you can actually email it to your customer or you can email it to yourself just to keep up with your records. You can send it by LAN, ES, ES sender. To me, this is a great way to keep your clients informed of what's going on with their car. And that way, if they ever come back and say something wasn't the way it was before, this is concrete, solid proof that it was. So it will actually save you from any liability that may arise. So I'm just gonna hit back, back. Go ahead and go back. Now you can go to system selection and you can choose what you wanna do. So say we just wanna do powertrain. We can just click that and it'll take us into it, but we're not gonna do that right now. It's pretty simple, self-explanatory. Um, ADS, service function, customize, engine check, vehicle information. So you get, you get the basics here. So we'll go all the way back. It will beep like that. I believe you can get a wireless one to go with these. I'm not sure, because I don't know why I would think that you would forget it unless you have one of the wireless OBD ports. So coming back here, we got local diagnosis, service functions. So you, you got a bunch of different little things you can do with this. You got your brake reset, steering angle reset, battery matching, ABS. I mean, the list goes on and on. You need this for most modern vehicles because when you change something and it has to be reset, most time without this kind of scanner, you're just out of luck. Uh, you can also change the language. So the user interface is extremely easy to use and see what you need to do. I have no issues with it at all. I think it looks phenomenal, to be honest with you. I think they did a really good job with the way it looks. And that's pretty much everything you need to know in a nutshell. I've been thoroughly impressed with how well this machine works. Honestly, I'm an Alltel guy at heart, but this one is definitely a very good scan tool. And for the price, it's going to be hard to beat. So after using it for a while, I can confidently say that this is made for professionals. So don't let that price tag fool you because this has some serious capabilities. From being able to program keys to bi-directional features that are only found on premium scan tools, 
and all the nice little conveniences in between. So my final conclusion on this, if you are wanting to be able to work like a pro or starting off as a mechanic, this is a great scanner for the money that will more than pay for itself. If you're just a DIYer that only does small repairs here and there, this may not be right for you. Instead of something much more affordable with less features such as the Launch C-Reader. But regardless of who you are and your skill level, I still think this is a good investment just for the potential savings with it being able to read and talk to all the different modules inside of your car. So to me, this is a no-brainer. Hope this video was helpful and best of luck to you all.